One more time. Run and jump, 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 and a rocket. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so run, jump, 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 rocket. I think I'll ever get to the point where I could possibly do this from the ground. I'm thinking probably not, but that's okay. <sighs> okay, I have some, some clue what to do now. All right, I feel better. All right, I feel better. Well, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to you one and all. This is Little Daffodil, and today we are going to do a little bit of work in our survival world. Uh, as you can see, since the last video, I've done a little uh, repair to the things that I didn't want to talk about being slightly burned <laughs> and destroyed. So I've repaired the carpet and the ceiling, uh, but it's time to deal with the hole in the floor. So today we are going to go ahead and build up a cooker it cooks it stores items automatically it is an auto cooker originally designed for 1.11 by log.zip and I will put the link in the description below I'm not going to do a full tutorial on it I do think that you should go ahead and watch his video I'm just going to show you that it is possible for a noob such as myself the one who tends to not be good at these things, to go ahead and build this successfully, in part thanks to his very good tutorial video. And I will say, I think a good tutorial video does a couple of very specific things. First, it starts out by demonstrating what you're going to build, showing you what the result should be. If you build it successfully, it will do this or it will do that. Uh, second, it gives you a comprehensive list of ingredients and gives you a moment to write them down. So you're not sitting there figuring out for yourself as the video goes along, I need three of these, I need four of those. It gives you that ingredient list. And then it walks through those steps uh, in order to build it. And this video by log.zip does that. I'm not necessarily in love with his speech style, but definitely appreciate his, uh, his tutorial style. So. I am going to go ahead and get my project items together and I will be right back with you. All right, so I have set up my project box and actually that's kind of interesting to me. Anyway, I took the shelter boxes that I have and I named each of them um, in the anvil. I think that's how I did it. <laughs> in the anvil, this one is a project box. So I know I can look at it and know that that's a project box. And anyway, it, I just, it works for me. So for this particular project, you need a trapped chest, a couple of regular chests, a redstone repeater, comparator, torch, some hoppers, a furnace, a droppers, observer, some redstone, and a couple of blocks. Okay, so uh, you are also going to need a two by four by four area. So I've actually gone a little bit big here, um, but one, two by one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, uh, wait a minute, one, two, three. I didn't go far enough. Hang, hang on, I'll be, I'll be right back because apparently I need to go out one more. I get so worried about the carpet, I guess I forgot to, uh, I forgot to dig out um, far enough. Well, that's embarrassing. Hang on, I'll be right back. All right, so I fixed my whole problem with the uh, not digging out by one block enough. And I've started putting it together. So we have our comparator going into a block with a piece of redstone dust here. And so now we're going to take our repeater and we're gonna put it here and right click once. Okay, so far so good. All right, so next we're gonna do the droppers. And so you want to do the jump in place. Whoa, wait, and shift, jump, place. To get them all three of them just like that. So they're gonna shoot up through each other into a chest. Yes, this, this does work, I promise, this, this does work. All right, so next we're gonna do is place the observer here. And the observer, the face, needs to be looking at the redstone there. Okay, so, so far, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get these names wrong on our comparator going into block redstone dust the observer facing into the redstone dust so that it can see it and see what's going on and behind it we have the repeater on a two tick which is one right click and then we have the three hoppers pointing straight up into each other they're going to send stuff up into a chest which will sit up there so next we are going to go ahead and place a block with a torch above that all right here's an observation in log.zip's video he says a four by two by four so two wide four long four deep i could swear that's what he said but if the chest is going to go on top of that dropper on that hopper i mean that means it's going to put the chests at floor height which in truth could be interesting and i think you know what i think when i built the original because i've done this one before so that's how i know i can do it but it's been it's been several weeks since i did it um when i built this one you can see it's the same build under there i remember coming to that realization that i was going to need to raise the whole thing up by one in order to put these above ground and you know at the time i was really not i, I was in a hurry i had a lot going on that day i just wanted to build this so i could get stuff cooking because I got tired of having a bunch of raw food upstairs. So I'm going to go ahead and build this one in the ground and see how that turns out. Because I think that could prove interesting. That I mean, can you imagine? It's flush with the floor. No reason I can't make them too wide. No reason I can't walk on them. I just need to find a way to make sure I remember what each one is for, you know the fuel, the cooked, and the raw. Anyway, all right, so we are almost done here. Um, and I need to put one more block, I believe, right above the torch. There we go, right there. And then from there, we are going to use the hoppers and the smelter to go ahead and make the back and forth for the fuel coming in, the food coming in, and then going back up and out to a chest. Okay, so to that end, let's go ahead and shift click a hopper onto there to go into uh, into that dropper, hopper, dropper. I, I swear I'm, I, yes, hopper and then dropper. Uh, I hope you know what I'm saying. And then we're going to put the furnace on there. We're going to put a hopper on there so it'll drop fuel in and a hopper on there so that it will drop uh, raw stuff in and then ooh, if I can do this right there we go another hopper there and that is essentially it as far as the mechanics go I, I like this design first of all it works and second of all, I, I, I could build it. And third of all, it's compact and it's simple. So uh, I'm liking all these things. So now let's go ahead and drop in our chests. Of course, we need to put, um, I'm, I'm probably going to come in and tweak this a little bit afterwards. And when I try to make this all pretty and figure out if I like it flush with the floor, uh, the trap chest to go in the middle. That was an interesting revelation. I had not known about that. Let's grab just a couple pieces of sand I have fuel so the fuel goes in the right chest the thing you want cooked goes in the middle chest and eventually it's supposed to pop up into that chest so if everything is working all right we are cooking some glass so now the glass should go up into the hopper and there it is okay Ah, if imitation is the f best form of flattery, man, uh, log.zip can be flattered because his video was very clear, his instructions very good, and I was able to build this. So um, next is the part where I get to be creative and I need to decide if I want to keep this flush with the floor, if I feel any need to increase the size of the chests themselves. You know, I think I would kind of like to keep it flush with the floor um, I use trapdoors 
in the other one in front of it for the purpose of being able to access and empty it because I don't necessarily want it running all the time. It does drop the game's frame rate when it's running. Um, so let me put a little thought into it. I'll come back in a moment and we're going to go ahead and see what we can do to repair this floor, put it all together, make it look good and put signs up so that we can remember which one is fuel, which one is raw and which one is the final product. So give me a minute to get myself together uh, regarding all that and I will be right back. All right. So I have decided to keep it flush with the floor just uh, because um, I want to see in the end how that works and you know sometimes you don't know until you try. So to make that work of course I'm going to need to uh, be able to access in front of these. So I'm going to go ahead and put in trap doors with the one on this end being the ladder down. So I can then, if I want to shut it off and I need to, I can just come in and empty all the hoppers and everything. It uh, depends. Uh, but I have found there are times when I want to do that. So then, of course, that is also going to help define how we interact with the floor as far as the carpet pattern goes. Um, because... Well, I, you know what I just thought of? Okay, clearly I can't, ne well, not clearly. I was about to say clearly I'm just going to have to live with seeing what I see there. But I have not actually tried this, which is just to take and hit shift. Yes, I can cover those with carpet. And then can I still get in them? Yes, I can. Okay, this, this, I like this. This is good. This is very good. Can I also cover this, this, and this? Yes, I can. But I can't necessarily get into it after I do so. That's interesting. I did not realize that I could cover chests with carpet. And that certainly allows me to go ahead and fill this all in with carpet. I had another idea too. Um, to make a utility bench. Uh, you know the tough part? I've buried it so well that I, I'm not going to know where it is. So building a utility bench of some sort might be interesting here too. Maybe right over these three pieces so that I can still find them when I need them. Hmm. Let's think about this. Do I have any more, by the way, of that gray, dark gray, so I can finish filling those out? No, I'm going to need to go and uh, shear a few more sheep for that. But let me show you what I mean about possibly, actually, I think I've got everything on me, building a utility bench. Um, it's kind of going to go along the lines of uh, the racks that I've put there. Um, but I, I, I have an idea without having clear vision. So I've brought some stuff with me that I thought might work for this. Um, and we need to consider, I'll have to move the bed because you need enough room to walk around. But say we did something like this where we put this and this here. Um, let's go with the most basic concepts. Um, and then imagine a series of those across there and I need a few more. Um, and then can we actually put signs? Let's put a sign there and say smelted goods. And I, I will probably change that, but let's see. Okay, so we could do that. We could put Iron trap doors across the top, hang signs from there to represent, and on both sides. We could hang signs on both sides. Um, and it would be kind of like a workbench in the middle here. And then I can still access the chests underneath by various methods. Okay, I like that. Let me go make a couple more uh, trap doors. And actually, let me just try one more thing. Okay. 
that's hanging there because the sign is holding it. Yeah, that's not going to look good there. Let's try this guy. Actually, you know what? I kind of, I really like, this is andesite. Um, the polished version of it using skin from P00, which turns it into a kind of a smoky gray brick texture. And I really like that. So actually, I think I'm going to go with that on the ends. And you know what I'm going to need to do periodically is just go in and wipe out my mix and match pack and look at everything without the skins and remind myself of what it looks like. Uh, and then there's also the decision, do I take these carpets off and let the whole front of this be trapdoors? And if I'm going to do that, do I also want to do trapdoors over here to match, which I made a whole bunch because I'm finding I'm using them a lot. Um, just I like them <laughs> I like the way they work on things of course these aren't going to be inset on this side whereas these are inset because they're actually you know in holes but I do like the continuity of having them on each side um, and the only way I could put them inset them. I don't really need that to be a double chest. And if I did, I could always change my mind later. But if I do it this way and then attach these, then they'll, oh, wait, no, shift. There we go. Or sneak as it were. There we go. Yeah, that looks better. And uh, the chest textures, obviously, they make it very easy to distinguish between trapped chests and regular chests, which is something I like it about it. Um, all right, let me go make a couple of iron trap doors and try and go shear a couple sheep to finish that carpet and move the bed. And I'll be, I'll be right back to show you the results here. Okay, so I like this. I've got all the chests facing so that the stripes go across. The trap chest in the middle, so we have some color pattern going on here. Let's go ahead and put these there. That's nice. I like this. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put the signage. We're going to have to do this on each side. So here is smelted, smelted goods. That means it's done. And then here, we're going to put in our raw goods. And here, we're going to put in our fuel. I don't know what fuke is. I mean fuel. Okay. All right, I really need to get my glasses checked because although I think this text is better, it's sometimes it's better than others. And uh, I know I just got I got new trifocals. I did. I finally have trifocals, those progressive -y things. <sighs> I'm not sure I'm as enamored of them as the rest of the world seems to be. So, all right, let me put signs on the other side. So we have fuel. And then we have raw goods. And then, of course, that leaves us with smelted goods. So now what we've got in here, and I'll probably end up having to rearrange the some of the aspects of this room because uh, I will end up with more stuff to store in here. But basically what we've got is um, when we're done uh, down in the mines, we come up here. Um, I can have dropped stuff in the ender chest or be carrying it up. Um, and then I bring it in here, I drop it in, I process it, and I sort it in this room. Whereas the other room is going to be dedicated to cookery. Um, of course, I'm also, I, I, I want mossy cobble. So I've, I've started getting myself ready to make a bunch of that. Um, and I need to put the bed. Where should I put the bed? What do you think? Um, I don't want to put it somewhere that I'm going to end up not being able to wake up without hitting my head. And at the moment, there's a very, 
I guess for now I'm just going to put it back there until I figure out maybe I'll clear the carpet out of this end of the room. This can be like a demarcation line for the carpet and then a whole new set of patterns can be here. But I'll have to think about that a little bit. Uh, there's something else I wanted to show you though before we end this video. So let's come out here. Actually, let me go grab something because, well, I want to talk to you about the tree. Yeah. Hi. I want to talk to you about the tree. So hang on just a second. Let me grab something. Okay, so I worked on the tree some more because I have yet to be happy with it. And to be honest, I didn't think it would be this hard. I really, I did not think working on the tree would be this hard because in real life, I'm actually not bad at drawing or painting trees. I'm not a massive artist or anything like that, but I'm not bad at trees in real life. But for some reason in Minecraft, I'm having trouble getting the shapes or the feel that I want. Now, this isn't bad. Uh, the different textures in the leaf blocks are from BWO. Um, I went with his because he kind of ended up where I was trying to get without realizing I was trying to get there. So, um, although they're still in the Savannah range of color, you have some very distinctive patterns going on in here. So they're not all exactly alike. Um, the acacia leaves are these tiny little leaves versus the oak leaves versus the birch leaves. So that's really quite nice. But I did just work on the tree a bit more because I wanted to make improvements to it. I worked on it as well because I wanted to make something more out of it. So here's our entrance and I've taken out the gates because I now have a trap door. But when you're not using the trap door, you're going to use the ladder. Why the ladder? Well, because I've been practicing flying. Not a whole lot, unfortunately I haven't, but I have determined that I need a platform to get started. So, um, and I have, I have like a stack and a half of like, of, of, uh, fireworks. So we're going to give it a try folks. We're going to give this a try on camera. This is going to be embarrassing. I'm pretty sure, but I have made myself a place from which to just jump and oh, well that, yeah, see, I told you it would be embarrassing, uh, a jump and pray. Um, and apparently that, that, yeah. Oh, tech with it. And see, it doesn't work. What am I doing wrong? Oh man. All right. Let's do this one more time. Let's do this one more time. Okay. And then, then I've really got to go get my laundry because <laughs> it's laundry day <laughs> and I need clothes to wear to work tomorrow. All right. One more time. One more time. Okay, cross your fingers with me, everybody. I have successfully done this a couple of times, but there's something about the timing, the jumping, that I'm just not getting it. And obviously I've built this and I haven't really given myself a good jumping spot from it. I'm just realizing that although I've successfully done it, I need to come out further beyond the mound of the tree to prevent myself from just coming down and landing on the tree. Okay, so I think I have to jump. So, and, oh, I started to glide. I think I started to glide. Yeah. All right. Well, obviously I need to practice some more. Um, so I'm going to do that. And hopefully uh, by the next video, because I think I am going to end it here, I will have improved. Um, and at the next video, hopefully, or in a video, a few videos ahead, I'll have figured out how to get more gunpowder. Because um, once you are airborne, it's really cool to throw those rockets out there and just fly. I like it. Uh-oh. 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 Hang on. Hang on. Nope. 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 It's been a long time since I've let a zombie kill me. It's not going to happen now. Ha! There you go. All right, folks. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.